welcome to this episode of Rocks Talks. I'm Faiza. I'm Parazad. And today we're going to talk about makeup. Not how to do it, but why you need to. So, as a performer, since part of your performance is your costume and part of your costume is your hair and makeup, for your audience, you need to make sure that they can see what your expression is and not just see that you're up there. That way, when I'm smiling, you see that I'm sm everything is smiling, not just, I think she looks happy, I can't tell. So it's really important to actually have features and that's what you're trying to do, among other things, with your makeup. Exactly, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about why makeup's important. Like, as she said, it completes your look, it helps the audience so they can actually see your face. I have yet to see a belly dancer who doesn't do a cat eye. It adds to the aesthetic. You know, this is a very glamorous dance, this is a very glamorous thing that we do, so your makeup is just part of the glamour. The audience doesn't want to come over and see their neighbor in no. her sports bra and her leggings belly dancing. She might be fabulous. But what they want to see is the girl with all the hair, all the lashes, tits to her chin, <laughs> zills on her fingers, and just a gorgeous costume. Like, this is the thing that we've come to associate with belly dance. This is the thing that people pay, pay to, to see. see. So that's why it's important. And since you are, if you are performing, you are performing for your audience. And not for yourself. And not for yourself. Unfortunately, we, we weren't able to include it in the original episode, but when we talked to Roxanne Shelby, she said that you know she could dance to one song every night for the rest of her life and feel fulfilled as an artist. Uh, Corey Zamora has students who she says are some of the best dancers she's ever seen who only dance for themselves. So they go to her studio, they take her lessons, they dance with her. There's nothing wrong with dancing for yourself. Right. But if you're gonna be dancing in front of people, it needs to not be about you. So therefore, exactly. put on your makeup so they can see you. Things that are important when you're doing your makeup. As Faiza said, you know, making sure that you have features. Yes, features. So while it's fun to go on YouTube and see how, you know, these beauty bloggers create sunsets on their face, that's great. However, if you have a sunset on your face and that's all I can see. Yeah, no. So the main thing to make sure is that you get your lips, lashes, brows, and a cheekbone. So that way people can see that you have a face. Yes. Because those are really important. Those are what really make up your facial expressions. So those are the things that the audience needs to see. Like I said, it's more important that your audience can see you than that you have crazy colors. Of course, experiment with colors. Adrienne tells me I'm never wearing enough makeup or that I, my makeup is boring because it's not colorful enough because I definitely work in a more, I work more in shadows than I do in color. It's fun to have your makeup match your costume though, if you can. It can be. It, like, I, mean, like, I like to do that. It's, it is fun. And like, that is something, but what's most important is, you know, your makeup can match your costume, but if all you have on your face is neon and nobody can see the neon because you are white AF, there's no point to it. And I will add that mostly I am performing up right next to people. When I'm performing up on stage, I'm less concerned with turquoise eyeshadow. I'm less, less concerned about having bright colors and more concerned with having eyes. And that's another point is that your restaurant look, your stage look, and your massive auditorium look are all going to be different because, I mean, if I walked around like this, people would think I was crazy, but it's necessary for stage. And I predominantly perform on a stage. There have been times that I've performed in 600 seat theaters and you bet that like I don't even blend my contour. I use dark dark contour and I just like ink stamp it onto my face. So that way people in the audience in the back can see that I have a face. So that's the thing to consider too is when you're looking if you watch Drag Race. <laughs> it's true though. If you I'm... watch like if you watch Drag Race and they're like show me the five minute version of this look, I think is what they told Trixie Mattel one time. You need to understand that depending on where you're performing, your techniques are gonna be different. Yes, when we performed at Worldcon, that we had 1,500 people in that audience. And we were also trying to recreate a 1960s kind of look. Clearly as, I haven't stopped. I mean, we had to... But it had to be like, what's the 1960s look 
that can be seen from way in the back of this massive auditorium. Yeah. And if you have to choose only one look because you just, I just can't, I can't do three different looks, then choose the one for stage. Because if you're in your costume and you're up right next to somebody, it's not going to be out of place for you to have too much. Mm -hmm. it's, it's better when it comes to your makeup to have too much than too little. Something that has been my observation in the 20 years that I have been teaching belly dance is especially women who don't wear makeup regularly. Yeah they put on what I wear to go to the grocery store and think that that's sufficient because that feels like a lot to them and it's just not. So this is us with normal daytime or date night makeup under studio lights. And this is us with actual makeup meant for studio. You can see our faces. I have cheekbones. I have lips and eyebrows. But I can also, you know, attest to the fact, you know, I, for especially the last half of my 20s, struggled with really bad cystic adult acne. And it really kind of felt like it didn't get better until I stopped wearing makeup every day. I can tell you that when I went from not really wearing makeup for work or, you know, every day and I went to perform, it was the first time that Faiza had to tell me to put on more blush. But, so I completely sympathize, but if you're one of the girls that doesn't, or guys, that doesn't wear makeup, have that drag queen show girlfriend. For me, it was, you know, when I need drag queen advice, for me, it's Adrienne. There's been multiple performances where she's like, put on more makeup, put on more makeup, put on more makeup. She's, she is she is the one that I go to and I'm like, am I wearing enough makeup? Right. I actually tried to start the hashtag, am I wearing enough makeup now, Adrienne? <laughs> <laughs> so this leads to practice. Yes. So you need to practice. You would never not practice dancing. Would you? So why would you go out just slapping something on your face that you have never practiced? So this is also something that I like to do if I'm like, I wanna try this new look or I kinda wanna see if this color works. I'll practice and then I'll take a bunch of selfies like around my house with different lighting. Oh, that's really good. And then look and go, okay. We all know, like you don't put on your makeup at the beginning of the day and then go through your entire day before you perform. Like you put on your makeup, you know, at T minus right. to show. So don't be the girl, I've done this too many times, who's trying a new look and something goes wrong and now you don't, don't have time to take it off. Don't. So now you're like half crying <laughs> while you're like trying to fix it. I've done it too many times. Spare yourself. Yes. Getting ready for the gig is not the time to try new things. No. Unless you absolutely know that you have time to fix it. So when you're looking for new looks to practice, <laughs> um, the things that you need to consider, like I said, we're not gonna show you how to do your makeup right now because there are five billion videos on YouTube that can show you how to do it. But here's a list of things to consider when you're looking for your looks. I would can look at the look and figure out how much skill, time, and effort it takes. If you are a brand new, new newbie, maybe don't go with a girl that's blending seven different shades and is doing it off of her own con, like her own eyeshadow palette that she's partnered with Urban Decay on. Yeah. Like maybe not that. Yeah. Because the thing is like, you know, this look that I have was inspired by one of those looks, but I did the same thing where I went, look, I don't have the time or patience to try and blend seven different colors to create a look. I need to do contrast. So there's a purple, there's a gold. Purple, gold. Done. They're complementary colors. We can shows see, up on my face. We can see your eyes. You can see my eyes. Yes. So also the materials, like, you know, if it's a look that can only be accomplished with the highest end stuff and you have a college student budget, don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. There's a lot more drugstore in my makeup kit than there used to be, but it works. If you want to learn from YouTube videos, I personally keep all of my performance makeup research almost exclusively to drag queens. Not it's the most practical application and crossover yes. for us. Because a lot of time, the, the beauty bloggers are not doing these things 
for a performer. They're doing them for someone who just likes to wear a lot of makeup every day or wants to wear them out on a date or whatever. Drag queens are gonna show you how to making your face have the shape that you want and you know, and they're very, very dramatic. The point of a drag queen is performance. Yes. So not only are they creating these incredibly feminine looks on their face, they're creating these incredibly feminine looks on their face for the purpose of being viewed in a performance setting on a stage under lights. Yes. It's gonna be the closest practical application to performance makeup for belly dance that there is out there. Another way to learn is to take workshops. We are very fortunate in Southern California to have Davila, who is not only a fabulous belly dancer, but an Emmy nominated mm -hmm. makeup artist. Yes. And she so generously hosts makeup workshops all the time to show you how to get your beat on. Yes. When we're talking about a budget, if you have to choose what you're going to spend your money on for your performance makeup, spend your money on primer, primer and primer, because if you have a really good quality primer on your eyelids and on your face, then lower quality things will still adhere to that. In that same vein, the base, whatever it is, if it's yeah. a primer or if it's a foundation, make sure it's good quality because not only will everything else stick to it better, it won't mess up your skin so bad. And same with eyelashes, getting good eyelashes. You can get pretty decent ones by Ardell. <laughs> I bought these on Amazon and they're my favorite ones. The ones from Ardell, I tend to use for like non-performance. Like, you know, if I'm going out with my friends or on a date or something like that, then I wear. I just, I have a soft spot for Ardell because it's my mom's name. I've had Davila buy, because I'm part of her troupe. I mean, like there was one time that she wanted to make sure that we could really have dramatic eyelashes. So she bought all of us. I even think she said they were like, dollar store and then yeah, set lashes. Yeah, you can still find like... And they were, as I called, weapons grade eyelashes because they were so dramatic. But then again, I also really can't stand off-brand eyelash glue. I like the Revlon because it comes with a brush. So you brush it onto your eyelashes. You do a little wave around for good luck. <laughs> Stick it on. Good eyelash glue makes all the difference in how you feel about eyelashes wearing them, trust me. Eyelashes are the things that people gripe about the most, at least my students do. And they're like, I don't want to wear eyelashes. Okay, they meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, every girl in musical theater, because every girl in musical theater is obsessed with Chicago and cabaret. It's like, if I could just run around in fake eyelashes and lingerie all the time, like. <laughs> anyway, so my students that I have to force to wear eyelashes, they're like, blah, 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 they don't like it. And part of that is because they don't do it that often. I wear fake eyelashes at least once a week. I've now been putting on thick eyelashes for 15 years and I still sometimes accidentally like glue the corner shut. Yes, yes. Or like it gets across my eyeball and then my boyfriend comes out. I was like, why are you touching your eye? Like, There's glue. <laughs> but it's so important for the whole look up. And if you're looking down, cause you're, you're being demure in your toxine, you want, it looks pretty when there's this curtain of lashes. Other things to consider, of course, are going to be contour. When it comes to contour, I think before we didn't do it, we were just like brows, lashes, cheeks, lips, because nobody knew how to contour. We now live in a post-Kardashian world where 12 year olds know how to contour. So something to consider with your contour, as we said, stage versus restaurant. This lovely, it's Elf. Elf. A for elf. Because I personally like working with powders as opposed to creams because I still struggle with acne. So I like to work with powders on top of my foundation. This is what I should use. This is what I'm using now. Last week I made the mistake of just going way, way too deep. And that was really interesting. Rocks on the rocks. But I would use this now and on most like small stages and restaurants, I would use this on very large, like especially mm. auditoriums, I would yeah. use this because it's going to make it so you can definitely see my face. So, she touched on this earlier, but I just wanna reiterate, know your face. Yes, that was the thing, great. So one of the things, especially amongst my friends who aren't performers, I constantly get asked if I can do their makeup for them for weddings and stuff like that. And it's kind of embarrassing. I always have to tell, I always have to decline because I know how to do my face. I don't know how to do other people's faces um, because I've just done my own makeup so much. Are there other looks? 
Are there other movements of the brush and there, are there other shapes that you can create that would have been more complementary to her? That's one of the things. Faiza and I have very round eyes. The look that kind of comes like this with the eyeshadow isn't as complimentary to us as a more rounded shape. And the only way that we know this, as she said before, is trial and error. Trial and error, trial and error. If you like the way it looks, then do it again and do it again. And if you don't like it, try a different Try shape. something else. And it's okay if you mess up, if you're practicing, like in practice. You can see I have, a, it's a little lighter here because I have put highlighter. There's, I just used that word and then I forgot it. Uh, <laughs> because I want to bring forward the, the elements of your complexion that you want to bring forward and the dark parts for the parts you want. But it's gonna be different for your face than my face. Well, incidentally, one of the things that I mentioned to Faiza is what's really popular in contour right now is to shadow right yeah. here to give yourself a little bit of a ski slope. But when I turn to the side, I have an incredibly aquiline nose. So if I were to give myself the ski slope and then turn, yeah. you'd be like, uh, no. <laughs> but these are the things that you have to learn and you really only learn them by, by practicing, practicing and learning your face. Yes. Part of it also is if you really are performing for your audience, you're really trying to have them join you on this journey and you really want to try and experience, never pronounce it right, Tata. 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 Part of the way you do that is through your expression of, of how you're feeling, the music. So if you're doing this gooey, gooey, uh, like heartfelt toxine. And nobody can see your face. And nobody can see your face. They don't know that they're supposed to feel passion. All of that. Yeah. They need to be able to see you feeling that. They just in see order a to... lot of undulations here. Which can be impressive but they're not gonna feel something. Your face is what tells your audience how to feel. So thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all of that stuff. I'm Faiza. I'm Parazon. And that's been Rocks Talks. Masalama. Masalama.